皆さん、こんばんは。私は、マッティウン・ニホンです。Everyone, good evening. This is Matthew and Nihon. And today I'm coming to you with my very first Nihonshu review. We will start this series with this little drink called Toyo Sakari. Now, Toyo Sakari comes from a sakikura or brewery called Toyomura Shuzo in Fukutsu City, which is a small city that neighbors Fukuoka.、Uh, I was there a couple of months ago with a friend. Uh, enjoying just some music and some food.、Um, I actually had a pretty good time. But when I was there, I happened to notice the building for Toyomura Shuzo. And I couldn't help myself. I had to go in. I tried a couple of their drinks, although not this specific one. And I enjoyed So I elected to buy this bottle and bring it home with me. Uh, unfortunately, it sat on my shelf for about two months, and that's a very important thing to remember about Nihonshu. You cannot keep it indefinitely. Once you buy a bottle of Nihonshu, you should really open it and drink it within the first six months. And when you do open it, you should absolutely drink it within the first month, because unfortunately, the longer it stays open or the longer it sits there, the lower the quality gets, and eventually it just doesn't taste very good anymore. It doesn't go bad per se, but you're just not going to get the same enjoyment out of it. Now, if you recall, I told you before that there were two major grades of Nihonshu Tokute Mei Shoshu and Fukutsu, or Futsu Shu. This particular drink is Futsu Shu, which, if you also recall, I told you is not considered the highest grade Nihonshu. However, I have been surprised by one or two futsus, and in this particular case, I'm willing to give it a try. I mean, even if it's not the greatest, futsu can be enjoyable in the right environment, when paired with the right food, and when in the right company. Now, because this is futsu, the rice polish is 70%, so they took about 30% of the rice grain off the top when they created it. And apparently, this fermented、uh, up to 15%. On the sweet dry scale,、uh, with negative being the more sweet and、uh, positive being the more dry, it comes out to about negative 15%, uh, which means that it is apparently a sweeter Nihonshu. And because it's futsu, you can have it both cold and hot, if you wish. I have elected to have it cold. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little bit of a moisture building up from the refrigeration. So, with that in mind, let's begin the pour. Now, in anticipation of our maiden pour today, I decided to splurge and went down to the supermarket to grab、mm, a couple of cheap foods to help pair with the Nihonshu and offer my input on which kind of flavor would match this particular drink. So, I went ahead and bought this, which I actually don't know the name of. It's some sort of a liver with vegetable.、Um, not exactly my favorite kind of food. I don't care much for liver, but I figured the texture might be interesting. Some sashimi, which you can see right here. I bought a bit of sushi to go alongside, and I decided to go ahead and grab some kimchi, which, while not necessarily, here, let me try to get some better lighting on that, while not necessarily Japanese, it has a nice clean flavor and can sometimes match the various styles of Nihonshu we run into. And so, Without further ado, let's begin the pour. So, first things first, we open the bottle. And next, the pour.
And now for the most important part, we drink. It actually has a very interesting um, mushroom or herbal kind of a smell. Uh, I'd be quite curious to see how it tastes. I have to be careful not to let it drip though. Mina-san, uh, kanpai. Ooh. Wow. Oh, wow. Whoa. That was unexpected. Um, it's very smooth. It's actually, it, it is definitely sweet. Kind of almost, I swear I had kind of this interesting taste of chocolate and maybe a little coffee in the aftertaste. I, I was not expecting that at all. That was, um, that was very interesting. Um... Not quite as clean a flavor as I normally expect, but then again, it's futsu, so... Um, wow, I, I genuinely really like this, though. Once again, I've been surprised by futsu. Hmm. I'm going to see how it pairs with the sushi. I'm going to go for um, some salmon. Here, salmon tends to have a nice clean flavor, and uh, mm. that's really good for sushi that only costs five bucks. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a great marriage. It's almost like the sushi here is the meal, and the nihonshu is the dessert. That follows right afterwards, especially with that weird chocolatey coffee flavor. I mean, if it, like a sweet coffee, but yeah. <laughs> mm. It's not as complex as I'm used to with uh, Ginjo and Daiginjo. The, the taste is pretty much right there. I mean, it, it well, almost. It, there's a slight delay before the background notes hit, kick in, but wow. Mm. Okay, so the sushi goes well with it. Uh, let me go ahead and try uh, some sashimi for a bit of a... Even cleaner taste. You can very, very rarely go wrong with sashimi and nihonshu as a pairing. Okay. Oh, that's nice sashimi. Mmm. Once again, that's a good pairing. Um, the sushi was um, not dry, but not, not not sweet, sweet, but not too dry. The sashimi is just a lot cleaner, and it's it's almost not dry as in texture, but just dry as in flavor, and it really matches. It it provides this great counterbalance between, um, you know, the sweetness of the nihonshu compared when compared with the fish. Uh, I, lo I love that pairing. And then let's try the liver. Mm. Surprisingly, that's not bad either. Um, I honestly wasn't sure 
if this, if the liver dish would match with the Nihonshu, because just because of the kind of the groundy earthiness of, um, well, I guess groundy, it's hard to really put into words. I, the aftertaste of liver has never been something that's my favorite. It's almost got the skunky, long-lasting quality, but somehow it, that, that, that kind of sticky, dirty taste that I find in liver is kind of, er, I won't say erased, it's still there, but somehow it blends with the sweet chocolatey, I'm not, I, can, I, I, I keep saying sweet and chocolatey as if it's like a really strong sweet and chocolatey flavor, it's not, it's very background. It's not a strong sweetness in any way, shape, or form, but somehow it, it's, it's blending together in a way that it just works. <laughs> um, it, it's probably because of this, this, the kind of the salty, dry quality. Um, with sweeter Nihon shoes, you can never go wrong with, you know, salt or dry flavors. Um, no more hearty things. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to try that one more time to see if I can find a better description for it, because that was not a good description on my part. Yeah, it's more, I guess the liver is more of a hearty flavor when, which quickly followed by the, the sweetness of the Nihonshu kind of makes a, a, again, a good kind of dinner dessert balance that's really quite good. Um, and so that brings us to the kimchi. Another uh, flavor that usually pairs well with sweet would be spicy. Not that I find kimchi particularly spicy, at least by my level, because I eat very spicy food. But the flavor profile should still work. Mm -hmm. A little bit of spice, just a hint of the cabbage, the pickling. It's kind of a bold... Not quite sour, but not quite sweet. Spicy flavor, and... That's interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure how to describe that. It completely changes... The chocolate flavor is not there anymore. Or that almost chocolate hint or aftertaste is just gone. It tastes like something new now, and that's one of the things I like about Nihonshu is if you drink it straight, it has one flavor. If you match it with different foods, you can get very different flavors just based on interaction. Um, it's, uh, Yeah, the kimchi definitely takes that chocolatey edge off of it, but I can't find a great way to describe what the Nihon, how the Nihonshu matches. It does, but it just... Mm. It gives it almost kind of a... The fruity quality of it comes out, although I can't say exactly what fruit... But, um, I mean, again, there's the sweetness, but almost pearish, almost like a pear kind of taste. 
when, when paired with the uh, spicy kimchi. I guess that would, that would be the best way to explain it. I mean, and it works. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it one last try. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It gives it yeah, that that's a that's a solid kind of pear or sweet pear follow-up. So um yeah. I have to say I am really happy with this neon shoe, especially as a futsu. I rarely expect to enjoy futsu, but one thing Nihon has shown me or one thing Japan has shown me is that I need to get more practice. I need to experience new things and I need to try more um, across the spectrum. So I guess uh, with that, I should conclude this review. All I can definitely say is this is one Nihon Shu that definitely deserves to be tried. Until then, please remember to always be willing to go beyond the horizon and always be willing to try new things. You never know what surprises you're going to find. Until then, keep safe, everyone. And I will see you in the next video. Also, please remember, hit like, click subscribe, and leave a content if you have any suggestions or feedback. I really appreciate it. I'm still new to this, I know. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.